In lesson 15, we are going to talk about symmetry and describing the various symmetries of different shapes. So in 15.1, um, if you translate segment AB up five units and then down five units, it's gonna land exactly on itself where it started. So if we were to take this and go up five, down five, it's gonna land exactly where it was. Um, so what you wanna do is spend a couple of minutes trying to come up with some other rigid transformations to create an image that fits exactly over the original segment. So if they like weren't labeled, you would see the exact same segment. And then also are there any single rigid motions that do the same thing? Now remember that rigid motion is um, rigid motion is reflections, rotations, and translations. So these are the ones that you're using to come up with um, a sequence of movements where you do more than one um, or just one rigid motion that will get you this segment. So go ahead, pause the video, try and come up with some on your own. So for number one, just anything that's really undoing itself, you could go left to right, or sorry, right to left to. You could go down four, right to, up four, left to, and come up with a bunch of things. You could reflect it over any line and then reflect it back over that line. Um, a ton of options, infinite options in the sequences when you can do multiple transformations. Um, when you're looking at doing one transformation, potentially maybe you came up with rotating it 180 degrees. So if you just rotated this 180 degrees around um, the midpoint, so if you found the midpoint and left that the same, but then just rotated this 180 degrees, that would work. Um, you could reflect it across its perpendicular bisector, which would also go through that midpoint. So if you drew the line of reflection through the midpoint and made sure that it was perpendicular to the segment, then that you could reflect over. Then B would map right onto A, A would map right onto B. Um, and you could reflect it across itself. So you could reflect it across the segment AB, then it would just stay um, the same. So just some ideas there. Um, all right, so write these next couple vocab terms on the bottom of page 104. So you got some space down there. So line of symmetry um, or symmetry is just when a figure, a figure of symmetry, if there's a rigid transformation that takes it onto itself. Okay, so takes the figure, it being the figure, onto itself. Not counting a transformation that leaves every point exactly where it is. So like this last one when I said reflecting this segment over itself. No. Whoops. Okay, so rigid transformation onto itself, that's what symmetry is. So if we take a look at this next one, if we had a line of symmetry, so the line of symmetry um, is where um, a figure can reflect across that line and land on itself. So a line of symmetry for a figure is a line, obviously, that a reflection across the line takes the figure onto itself. Okay, or that if you fold the figure over the line of symmetry, it will land on itself. Okay, if you fold the figure... it lands on itself. It lands exactly on itself. So if we were to fold this, this whole hexagon would just land right on itself in both of those. And then in this one, this is the letter I. So let me draw over it a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. 
And so the eye, if you go directly down the middle vertically, then this part will flip over. Okay, so these little top lines will flip over onto themselves. And if you go horizontally, then the top will flip down to the bottom. So this will fold over onto itself that way. So then that's called reflection symmetry when it has that. Where if you go over, if you fold over the line of symmetry, it just lands on itself. So that's just called reflection symmetry when it has a line of reflection. One or more. Um, and then it could have rotation symmetry if there's a single rotation strictly between, not including, so not including zero or one, but strictly between zero and 360 that takes the figure onto itself. So if you can rotate it some number between zero and 360 and it will land back on itself. So let's take a look at one of these. Um, so if we did this star, okay, so a star, depending on how it's drawn, will have rotational symmetry. So you could actually rotate this peak to this one and then it would look the same or this peak. And that's less than 360 degrees. It's like 72 degrees. Okay, but it can just rotate to the next peak and then it'll look the same. And you could go, you know, you could take this one to this one as well. So you could do a bigger rotation that way. Okay, but rotational symmetry. Um, then if you missed this um, definition on your chart, get this written in. So reflection, this is from lesson 11, but if you missed it, um, so on your, on your piece of paper that has all of these on them, so a reflection is defined using a line, okay? So it's defined using a line, meaning we name it using a line. So if you look here, reflect A across line M. So we always name a line when we're saying a reflection. It takes each point to another point on the other side of the line. Okay, so the reflection is on the other side of the line, the same distance. Okay, so A is this far from M. So A prime is going to be that far from M. So these distances to the line of reflection are the same. And then distance from a point to a line is always perpendicular. So this needs to be perpendicular. So A to A prime needs to be perpendicular to M. All right, then in class we worked on a visual display of figures. So you'll need to talk to your teacher about how to make that portion of this lesson up because we worked in small groups to find a bunch of shapes and their um, symmetries. So talk to your teacher, see what they say about that. Then in um, 15.3, this is on the top of page 106. So we looked at this question, okay? So Chiron thinks both diagonals of a kite are lines of symmetry. Tyler thinks only one diagonal is a line of symmetry. Who's correct? and explain how you know. So pause the video, see if you can come up with that. I'm also gonna give you a hint about what some different vocab terms mean in here. Okay, so if you need to use the hint, Chiron thinks both, so both means two. Diagonals of a kite, so if you need to know what a kite is, a kite looks like this. So it has two sets of sides that are equal next to each other, but not across from each other. So the ones across from each other are not the same, but next to each other are. Diagonals, remember, connect vertices, opposite vertices together. Okay, so these are the two diagonals. So see if that helps you determine the answer to this. So hopefully you came up with that Tyler is correct, okay, that only one diagonal will work. If we flip over this diagonal, this point 
will, re will reflect to here. So, whoops. So this point will reflect exactly the same distance over the line of reflection. So it will look like this. These two points will stay on the line of reflection. And then this one will flip way up here. So this would be the reflected kite over that middle line. Definitely not a line of symmetry since it's not reflecting over itself. However, this line, this point, is exactly the same distance away. So if I reflect this one over, okay, that's gonna be here. This point will stay, this point will stay. So this half reflects here, this half folds over here or reflects here, so it lands directly on itself. So one line of symmetry. Then at the bottom of page 106, you can sketch a couple of shapes. So set, sketch some shapes with these properties, okay? So exactly one line of symmetry, that means one line of symmetry and no others. So not just a shape that you draw one line of symmetry, but a shape that actually only has one line of symmetry. Um, and then similarly, one that has exactly five, no more, no less. And then one that has um, at least two. So at least two means it could have three, four, five, anything. It just has to have at least two. Could have more, doesn't have to. So spend some time trying to think about that. And then you can come back and I'll show you a couple examples. Okay, so for exactly one line of symmetry, I would say... Um, an isosceles triangle that isn't also equilateral, so not this one. Let me get um, here. So if you did this one, then I would say there's only one line of symmetry here that goes from the top vertex to the bottom. And we'll split this. So that one would be able to land on itself. On, in only one line of symmetry. Now this is not the only shape, there are others. Okay, you even don't have to do polygons. You could be doing some kind of made up shapes or you could do a shape that's not a polygon like this heart. This heart would only have one line of symmetry right down that dip, fold over onto itself. So that's some examples of one. At least two, again, just needs to have at least two, it could have more. So a square could be an example of that. A square definitely has two. It has more than two, but definitely has two. So vertically down the middle, horizontally down the middle, that's two. Could also do the diagonals, and that would give you four. But so that's one with at least two. And then five um, makes me think of a pentagon. Okay, so if you had a regular pentagon, you should be able to do lines of symmetry through each of the vertices, okay, straight down to the other side. So there's one, two, three, four, and So that's one with exactly five. The star um, that we talked about earlier would be five as well. Through each of those, I'm not gonna draw them all on here, but through each of the peaks. Okay, so you could do, this one would be a line of symmetry and then similarly through all the others. All right, then your learning targets was that you could describe reflections that take figures onto themselves. So I can describe reflections that take figures onto themselves. This is just symmetry. Symmetry is when a, ref well, reflection symmetry, when a figure takes, itself, takes um, a reflection onto itself. So a reflection that takes it onto itself is symmetry. Then your cool down for this lesson Okay, is going to be this. So it looks like this. What happens if the diagonals of a rectangle 
Um, what happens to the diagonals when a rectangle is reflected on its lines of symmetry? So let's draw a rectangle. So let me just get a rectangle drawn in here, draw in the diagonals. So remember diagonal connects corner to corner across the shape. If you went corner to corner next to, that would just be the side. Okay, so it has to be across from each other or not next to. So what happens to these diagonals when we reflect across the lines of symmetry? Remember for a rectangle, you've got a horizontal line of symmetry here. You've got a vertical line of symmetry here. So what happens to them when they're reflected over those? Okay, when this is folded over, so if you were to trace this, trace in the diagonals and fold it on the reflection line, what would happen to the diagonals? And then what does this suggest about the diagonals of a rectangle? And in this case, what does it suggest about them? They're asking you to notice something about their lengths. And then don't forget about your lesson 15 practice problems.